D class. Hello. We are here to, well, rank a bunch of Keter class SCPs. Now. Wait, Dragon. Can you speak for a moment? Because I think something's going up. Hello. Okay. Streamlines wasn't picking up your voice for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Streamlabs. But anyway. Um, Alright, now for the first SCP. SCP-140 is a modern hard copy book with an unremarkable black binding and an unknown number of white pages. The book jacket is missing, but the title, A Chronicle of the Divas, is clearly legible. The inside cover is signed by the author, whose name is Indecipherable. The text is copyrighted 19 redacted. Careful examination reveals there are far more pages between the bindings than could be contained within. Research admit to feelings of paranoia, unease, and occasional nausea when reading SCP-140, although this may be related to the subject material. Nonetheless, readers almost universally describe SCP-140 as fascinating and express continued interest, despite its frequently unsettling content. 1 in 15 readers describe SCP-140 as having a faint odor of dried blood. SCP-140 is a detailed account of an of an ancient civilization originally originating in what is now South Central Siberia, identified as the Devites. I'm, I'm butchering some of these words because they're not in, in, Some of these words are English. I'm sorry if I butcher it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, although like all cultures in it, Davites evolved and changed over time. They appear to have exhibited unusual continually universal fixtures of the Davite culture in all periods, including militarism, conquests, ancient wars, ancestor worship, urban centers rolling over large slave populations, gruesome human sacrifice. I'm sorry, what populations? <laughs> We're gonna skip it, dragon. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> what has who now? Urban centers ruling over large slave populations. Are you happy, dragon? There's some paying fucked up things. So, this no, is a theater. I was paying attention, and I was I just heard that, and I'm like, oh. This is a theater. What are you going to expect? <laughs> I was jump scared. <laughs> anyway. Gruesome human sacrifice and the practice of apparently officious thaumaturgic uh, rituals. A variety of relics and creatures produced by the Davite culture would be abnormal normal, or dangerous enough if the account is to be believed to qualify for containment in their own right. SCP-140 comes into contact with any fluid suitable for writing, including human blood. The account of Davite civilization's history expands. Human blood appears the most potent of possible writing substances, but in any case, the amount of new material does not correspond proportionally to the fluids introduced. Although these new segments sometimes include new descriptions of rituals or cultural traits or illustrations of previously covered material, they more frequently include new, more recent amounts of information chronically the continued history of the Davite civilization or descriptions of new individuals and artifacts. Formerly de decisive defeats become setbacks, new persons and events are inserted. Foundation archaeologists have discovered corresponding new artifacts and traces of Davite civilization in epical locations and strata, in some cases found in dig sites that have already been through thoroughly explored. Although at times the Davites were a collection of city-states, they appear to have cons consistently returned to imperialism under the the theocratic aristocracy. 
practitioners of cannibalism and thermaturgy. <laughs> Although initially foundation researchers believed that the Deva to have been a hereditary class recycling the names of noteworthy individuals, evidence of the events of Redacted now suggests that the Deva possessed pre preternatural longevity as a result of Redacted. Several researchers, notably Professor Redacted, have concluded the Deva were so divergent from modern humans as to be a separate subspecies. The conclusion, supported by graphic representations within SCP-140 and data expunged. SCP-140 is remarkably detailed by the standards of primary source, seeming closer to a biography than a historic text. It includes lurid descriptions of sacrificial rites, battlefield descriptions, daily life, and the life stories of various noteworthy individuals, including quotes and dates of birth. Over redacted distinct individuals have been identified, including the interval presently termed SCP-140-A, of which only redacted are accounted for by recorded deaths. Your stream labs is in the middle of your fucking screen, by the way. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> I'll move that. I meant to cook that out of it. Professional streamer. Well, they can't... <laughs> they don't see that. Only you do. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Foundation archaeologists have... I can leak your IP address now. Fuck off. Foundation <laughs> archaeologists have discovered several sites containing ruins consistent uh, with the supposed Davite culture in various locations across Siberia, northern Iran, and Mongolia. Artifacts and traces of intercultural conflict and contact have been discovered as far west as Carpathian Mountains and as far east as northern Pakistan and China. These include SCP Redacted. Hey, Devil May Cry on Monday? Hell yeah. Alright, so before I put my opinion, what do you think, Dragon? Uh, which one is where they get sent straight to hell? <laughs> Answer me, Bright. It's a book, Dragon. Oh. It's a book that tells the history of all that shit. All that shit I've been tell telling you, if you're listening. I am very stupid. Uh, anyways, but it uses um, human blood mainly as the right. Uh, only one. Yeah, I kind of agree. Cause yeah. It doesn't look like it would really affect anyone. I mean, as long as you keep people out of its containment cell. Like, it's not going to draw blood out of nowhere. Let's see. I could have made a really fucked up joke there. Yeah, but this... Oh, Dragon, no. Why is... <laughs> I'm not! Because it's fucked up. But everyone who knows can probably like... To... Yeah, that would be it. Why the fuck is Keemstar trending? Oh, it's not Keemstar. Let's fucking go. Okay, I... Oops. I was scared for a moment. It's not Keemstar. <laughs> Alright. You ready for the next one? It, oh, it might be Keemstar. Yes. This one, you, you'll you heavily agree, is a Keter. As most people would. Oh, yeah. SCP-149 is a breed of mosquito, which carries a strain Kill it. of retrovirus. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Light it on fire. <laughs> Immediately fire. I don't want to hear the rest. Fire. I don't, it's a fucking mosquito. There's Light no it on neutralized fire. class. Government. Government. There's no neutralized class on the tier list. Let's just... Fucking light it on fire. Add a, add a tier where it just immediately gets lit on fucking fire. Light it on fire. <laughs> Let's just finish it off so we can no, say where to put it. No, light it on fire. Dragon, shut the fuck up. Please. <laughs> we can't light it on fire. Please. <laughs> Let's just read it, alright? Anyway. <laughs> Strain of retrovirus that mutates regenerating human cells into fertilized mosquito eggs. SCP-149-A is injected directly into the bloodstream when SCP-149 feeds. The SCP-149-A quickly works on the nucleus of the cells, 
warping the DNA. Your first set of cells bred from these changed instructions closely resembles cysts and are con concentrated in the lining of the asphagus and the sinuses upon dissection. However, these cysts have revealed to be filled with SCP-149's larvae. These cysts act acting as a protective ca casing against external forces. SCP-149 appears to go through its maturation cycle in a matter of hours. By the time the subject is able to feel any effects, the first generation of SCP-149 has already grown inside the subject's body. SCP-149 primarily achieves ex exodus through the mouth and nostrils, occasionally being diverted through the saphenoid sinuses to escape through the eye sockets. Infection by SCP-149 is fatal, and chance of infection has been estimated to be 50% from one bite. Oh dear. That's... Okay, I'm thinking more of a city range. I'm thinking light city range. On, light, what about light, you? Light it on, light, light it on fire. <laughs> you gotta choose one Kill of the areas, Kill dragon. It. Kill it. Which... <laughs> Government. I'm... So city? Country. Country. You, you're saying country? What's your reason for country? I hate mosquitoes. They're fucking everywhere. And as someone who lives in Florida, they are everywhere. It is not a city. They are they're fucking everywhere. Okay, fair enough. They, there is a lot of them. All right, we'll play a country. I mean, it's like a 50% chance you'll die from what bite. And if if you don't have bug spray, you're fucking dead. Yeah. Actually, are they immune to bug spray? It does not say that, I don't think. Hold on. No, it does not. It does not. It does not say they're immune to bug spray or whatever. Well, the next one is also a bug, but this one is a bit more disturbing. All right, you ready, Dragon? Please, can we have a can we have a subgroup where it's all the bugs and they're it's just light on fire? <laughs> Please. Please. What the fuck? I don't want to deal with the bugs. Let's get through this. I'm not even The bugs other don't even the other three aren't even bugs, so if we get through this one, we're done with the bugs. Okay. Bugs don't even bother me that much, but it's just fucking SCP bugs. Yeah. Alright. So SCP-150 is an obligate parasite that resembles the tongue-eating louse. But is adapted the to- The The tongue- e It resembles the tongue-eating louse. What is that? It's basically an underwater fish bug that- that- Literally goes around, cuts off the tongues of fish, and replaces it. Replaces it oh. as his new tongue. And, of course, fish oh, yeah. eventually oh, yeah. dies. I know that fish. I know that fish, yeah. Yeah, that's basically that's what horrifying. that is. But is adapted to form conjective symbiotic relationships with humans for a period of its lifespan. Upon contact with a human subject, SCP-150 embeds itself deeply in, in the flesh of its host. Over the course of approximately seven days, the parasite will burrow into the host and affect numerous psychological alterations. I don't like that. The most glaring alteration is a gradual conversion of the limb nearest the infection site into a continuous appendage. As SCP-150 consumes the host flesh, it excretes tissue that resembles the augments the functionality of the host limb without causing trans transplant rejection. It is suspected that SCP-150 is able to secrete anesthetic and immunosuppressant substances to prevent the host body from responding to the change. Furthermore, right. yeah. Why did you think this was a good stream idea? I've done what this before. I mean, yeah, true. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> Why? No, who came up with these bugs? Because I want to have a nice discussion with them <laughs> on how they get no bitches. Oh, but anyway, ah. anyway, there's still more to go. <laughs> ah. Furthermore, the nervous tissue excreted by SCP-150 is able to 
interface with the host nervous system. By the time the process is complete, the host will be able to control the affected limb with no loss in mobility and often with improved strength, reflexes, and resilience. So it's like Venom. Sort of. But let's keep going, because um, hmm. it's worse. I don't like it. For a period of one to two weeks, SCP-150 will reproduce feeding on nutrients from the uh, from and de depositing eggs into assimilated blood vessels. The eggs are deposited throughout the human body via the bloodstream. While the vast majority of them die off, enough survive to begin colonizing and altering the rest of the host's body. Mm. Though subjects report discomfort and occasional loss of motor control through the, this process, they often will not recognize the cause of s said discomfort. It is still unclear why the offspring do not complete, uh, compete with each other for space or resources, nor how, they, how the assimilation process leaves the body's cell signaling mechanisms and processes unaffected. SCP-150 reproduces during uh, this assimilation process. As the lungs are assimilated, more eggs are produced and spread by the patient's coughing. Although as many as 10,000 eggs may be produced during this time, it is estimated that only 1% of them find their, their way into another host, of which 1% survive the host's immune response and implant successfully. Although SCP-150 inevitably results in assimilation and alteration of the central nervous system, including the spinal cord and brain, the host consciousness and behavior are seemingly unaffected. Interviews with subjects infected by SCP-150 have yielded little information as infected subjects unaware of SCP-150 claim to sense no changes or improvement in certain senses and facu faculties. While subjects aware of the infection are able to pinpoint the source of the change, they exhibit little to no negative feelings and often express positively towards it. Mm. Also, even though it doesn't is say that with stories about SCB-150, the limbs that they recreate are bug limbs. Ah, that's so fucking gross. That's so gross. But seeing how when when it, it only said one percent survive when spread, mm. I don't think it, it can be a country level threat like the blood flies because blood flies can keep going, but like, um. This 150, like, only 1% of the survive. It's, like, not that much. Mm -hmm. So I think city. What do you think? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if more survive, like, 50%, like, blood flies, then it would be a country level of threat, but it was only 1%. So fucking. Whoever the fuck uh, thought that was a good idea for an SCP, I. Well, the... I am scared of them. The first gen was meant to be the most horrifying SCPs, or you no, know, like to bring in people to come in and and like the series. So in one fifth, in the first generation was one to nine 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 nine, uh, to to the tickle monster nine 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 nine. So one fifty is part of the first gen, so it was meant to be horrifying. But can it not? Yes, but now we're no longer dealing with bugs. <laughs> so are you happy? Look, I can deal with like normal ass bugs, but these just... This is not okay. <laughs> but anyway. Alright, this is SCP-151-D, which means D-Class Personnel. Alright. What appears to be a four foot four albino human child with a furry tail wearing dark clothing, interactions with the containment team showed SCP 151 to be invulnerable. Okay, so this is just a child, so I don't think that's that much of a threat. Hold on. Oh dear. During its escape, SCP 151 shows signs of psychokinetic abilities as it's caused several barriers to explode in front of it. In order to allow it to pass through, uh, allow it to pass through. 
Fortunately, none of the destroyed barriers cause containment failures of other SCPs. SCP-151 has agreed to wear a tracking device to help prevent contact with personnel convicted of violent crime towards women and or children whom it responds to with extreme violence, usually okay, resulting I... in significant collateral damage. Okay, based child? So basically it can just cause explosions. So it's basically Bakugo. But, but usually, well, like you said, it's against like sex offenders and shit. Yeah. So, Reclass. not that big of a threat. Oh, I mean, it's like, oh, its class was just shit. recently changed. Oh boy. Ah. Well, it's no longer Keter. Well, technically it is, but not. Its new class is neutralized. It only harms like pieces of shit, so it's fine. You know what neutralized yeah, means, right? Uh, no. It means it. They're dead. No! What the fuck? That's a child. Aww. Oh. Oh, yeah. cool. now you can see the picture of the child. Because I need to see which one it is put on the tier list. Oh, yeah, and their name is K. That's it. Why would they do that to the child? The child did nothing wrong. So, reclassification. Well, it was dead. already reclassified. Because <laughs> it's dead. Reclassification. Why would they kill the base child? I don't know. That child did nothing. That child did nothing wrong, and I stand by that. Ah, here we go. Addendum 151-03. For safety reasons, the special containment procedures have been modified and the description of object updated to facilitate recognition by personnel. And, and on the document 151-A at the very bottom, it says, Subject refused to respond to further questioning. Interview terminated. As well as they wished... Uh, at, hold on. I think... Oh yeah, last addendum. 151-04, reclassified as neutralized. See experiment log 151-D. So we can finally see which what killed it. No, they tried they tr No. What happened? Okay, I'm just gonna say that I'm gonna read the last uh last three. Test ten. SCP six eight two. SCP-151 entered SCP-682's chamber. SCP-682 attacked SCP-151, biting off its left arm. The arm spontaneously regenerated. SCP-151 then forcefully removed SCP-682's lo lower jaw, subdued SCP-682, then severed its head. Utilizing SCP-682's own lower jaw, SCP-151 then left SCP-682's chamber, Neither SCP neutralized. Test 11. SCP-056. SCP-151 entered SCP-056 chamber. SCP-056 changed into data expunged. SCP-151 attempted to this same invasion method as in test 1, but rather than vanish, it became momentarily transparent before being captured by SCP-056. SCP-056 proceeded to dismember SCP-151. SCP-151 attempted to regenerate, but SCP-056 emitted a gray-black flame from its body, terminating SCP-151 and destroying SCP-056 containment area. SCP-056 was contained by D-Class personnel and its cell rebuilt SCP-051 reclassified as neutralized. Note, this may seem like a victory. After all, we destroyed a sentient, malicious, and seemingly invincible creature, but scp 56 reaction to SCP-151 means that there is a bigger, better version of SCP-151 out there somewhere. I suggest we do more research into the weaponization of SCPs to prepare for it. Dr. Redacted. So, in one of the tests, they just, they killed him. That's what happened, Dragon. I'm sad.
All right, now for the next one. The, we're, I just realized we just left a sad one. Now we're going to go to another sad one. Oh! <laughs> I would actually at this point rather uh, have the bugs. <gasps> well, it's not a person this time, per se. All right. Oh. SCP-161-JP. JP means Japanese branch. Mm. Is a mental disorder that affects cognition towards the action and concept of eyeling. From patients of SCP-161-JP, cognition towards the action of eyeling and concepts related to them are lost retroactively. As a result, for example, a motion of a ballerina eyeling around is recognized to the patients as a motion of simply spinning ar around s single legged and a false memory which guides patients to think that the motion was such so retrospectively is created as an extreme example the japanese traditional art no which consists mostly of performers eyeling and walking is recognized to the patients as performers simply walking around with a fan in hand Oh. Patients of SCP-161-JP that recognize words mean aisle is a spoken sound lost all memory of the past few hours. This system, symptom also occurs when they when they cite the phonemies of the word. So basically, if they see any aisling or see the word aisling or I, you lose your memory. And you have what no control. And that goes for anyone or just this branch? Uh, just for anyone that's infected by the SCP. Okay. Eh, city. I think that's city. Yeah. If it infected a lot of people, I think that would be bad. But it's also, it just causes you to forget your memory. Right? Yeah, it's not like it kills you. Yeah. But, like, it also makes you forget shit, which is bad. Like, just because you... Th is it think or say a word? It's... It's either... Either you see idling, or when you hear the word, or see the word. Idling. Idling. E. Idling. E y l i n g. That isn't really a super common word, though. Right. I yeah no I think I stay with city though. Yeah. Like, it, it can be pretty pretty bad, but like not like it'll kill a bunch of people. It's just like it. <laughs> Can spread and just be like fuck up people's lives pretty I, easily. I, yeah, I told you it was gonna get, get depressing with this one too. I wouldn't say it's that depressing. I'd just say like kind of just fucky. Oh, I didn't. Well, we're now left the bugs, the sadness. Now we're going into parasites. Ah, you should have just put that one with the bugs because I think that's just equally as. Well, I'm going down to numbers. Fair. I'm going down in order. All right, description. The org organic component of SCP-165 resembles that of a typical parasitic mites, 700, or 750 micrometers in length with eight legs and a genetic structure similar of that of house dust mite. Mm. The main difference is the hermit crab-like behavior of approaching grains of sand to its back. It is unknown what purpose the sand serves, but the massive colony of SCP-165 numbers and hundreds of billions to possibly trillions, creating a, lo a rather large dune. Similarities between data expunge and SCP-165 are, are only superficial. Data expunge's colony is protozoan in nature and apparently shows a collective intelligence and awareness that is not, not yet understood. SCP P-165's colony is made of, up of individual Ikari who don't show cooperation but rather competition in the hunt for food. Like mosquitoes, they rely on chemical detection of carbon dioxide and sugars in the air to detect prey. The Ikari mites roll and bound over one another toward prey, only using their legs to climb over one another. When in contact with the flesh of animals, they release a numbing chemical toxin in their bite similarly and make up to that of a mosquito and flea bite toxins. 
subjects are typically unaware that millions of mites are taking turns at grabbing mouthfuls of its flesh as they swarm Ugh. around their victim. Gross. A typical swarm resembles a swarming vortex around a victim or a victim's appendage. The SCP-165 colony is efficient enough in their competitive, competitive swarming that most animals and pinches can be deflushed and reduced to bone within minutes. The numbing toxin is so effective that sleeping victims may not wake up as their limbs are eaten away. That's so fucking gross. The Akari mites are resistant Ooh. to all but the most dangerous of pesticides. They retreat... This makes me feel fucking itchy, and I don't like that. <laughs> they retreat from heat and will often seek shade when available. Being the most active during the night, hunting for large sleeping prey, their vulnerability to heat is the most preferable technique for containment. So what do you think, That's... Dragon? Ugh. City. If not, like, continent. Or, no, not continent. Con country. You, th you thinking country? Yeah. Gross. Ugh. Ugh. I mean, I think it too, because there's know. a, there's like in a lot of countries in the world, there's like a bunch of sandy areas. Yeah. So. Basically, you just don't want to live in Egypt or a sandy area. <laughs> or Arizona. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, oh God, Arizona. Arizona wouldn't exist. Or, like, beachy areas, because those are technically sandy. So I guess Florida's fucked, too. Actually, I think that's, like, all the coastline of America would be fucked, because sand. True. You just missed out on bugs and yeah. parasites. Congratulations. What? Oh hi, hi! Oh, Adora, yeah. you're here. Hi, we're doing you missed, this. You missed some of the arguably worst SCPs ever, not because you... they're poorly written, but because they're gross. Adora, you know this one. Uh, you missed out on the blood flies. Oh, blood flies! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm concerned. Is that the first time you've heard of the blood flies? Yeah, it was the first time Dragon heard of the blood flies. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, and apparently one of the Keters that we found was recently changed and neutralized. <laughs> so it was reclassified. <laughs> it is dead. So, so it's dead. Okay, that's nice. That's well, nice. actually, they weren't really evil or Keter. They just put it Keter because it was hedged. It was basically a kind version of Bakugo. Hmm. <laughs> basically. <laughs> but anyway. Kind version of, of him, but with, uh, with probably with horrible control of powers. Well, yeah. And, and the only times that he, act he actually would kill or anything would be uh, sex offenders or people who want to hurt him. People that deserve oh. to die anyways. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Now for next SCP. SCP-169 is, <clears throat> is surmised to be the marine anthropod of enormous size known as the Leviathan by generations of sailors in oral history. Presumed at first to be a myth, SCP-169 was detected on redacted by Mobile Task Force Gamma-6 during an investigation of paranormal activity around the redacted archipelago. During, I'm guessing this is supposed to be Y, but it looks like two swords together. Y6 investigation, Dr. Redacted discovered the archipelago oh, to have moved at least three kilometers from its original location. Though, initially, Dr. Redacted believes this motion should be due to unusually quick continental drift, a reconnaissance mission performed by the USSS, the Redacted, revealed the archipelago to be the protrusions of rock-like plates covering the enormous organic mass. Hmm. The foundation was brought in immediately to begin threat management. 
Doctor Redacted and, and Doctor Redacted. It's oh, my favorite doctor. Redacted. Doctor Redacted and Doctor Redacted. Those are my favorite. <laughs> they put black oh, bars over their names, so I have no. So I can't tell you their names. I highlight them and then. What they anyway, estimate SCP-169's body length to be between 2,000 and 8,000 kilometers. The creature is thought oh. to have existed since the pre-Cambrian era. No, no idea if I said that right. But anyway, no other specimens have been cited. Almost nothing is known about SCP-169's habits, such as its rep re reproductive capabilities, if any, food source and nesting area. Research regarding SCP-169 is pending approval. The archipelago known as the Redacted Islands have historically been uninhabited through claimed by Redacted and 17 Redacted. Upon handover to the Foundation, Redacted presence has evacuated on the pretense of rising sea levels, though the archipelago has remained above sea level for seven, several millennia. Any change of death by SCP-169 could result in the disappearance of the entire archipelago. SCP-169 moves slowly, less than one kilometer per week, but seems only to be adrift. Its method of propulsion, propulsion, yeah, is unknown. Regular seismic tremors seem to indicate breathing about every three months, causing minor shifts in the island's terrain, suggesting that the creature is probably dormant. Oh dear. Uh, I think this is an easy continent. Hold on. Hold on, I got some other stuff here. Oh. Alright. Information suppression. The USSS Redacted was scuttled with all hands immediately after discovery of SCP-169 and the permission of the American government. The public is forbidden from entering the archipelago created by SCP-169 due to the conveniently a large number of resident endangered bird species. As indicated oh. above, satellite footage is to be doctored in order to suppress knowledge of SCP-169's movement NASA is currently cooperating with the Foundation in keeping the existence of SCP-169 quiet, and it's currently permitting the Foundation's use of their satellites for photographic use. Hmm. Birds. Okay, maybe... I know I say still on. say content. There's one more paragraph. Addendum 0 through 20. In 1990... Redacted. The U.S. National Oceanic and Af Atmospheric Administration... An American scientific agency unaffiliated with and unaware of the existence of the Foundation detected a, a an ultra ultra low frequency underwater sound emanating from around redacted approximately redacted kilometers from the s southwestern coast of South America. Despite the best efforts of embedded ag agent redacted, news of the sound leaked to the media. Receiving significant media coverage, Foundation analysis concluded that a massive underwater organism was the source of the noise, and SCP-169 was hypothesized to be the source as its head, as well within the possible locations of, of the rest of SCP-169. The sound confirms Y6-0421's hypothesis that SCP-169 is gargantuan in size. Further efforts by scientific or civilian teams to determine the source of the noise must be stopped by any means necessary. Hmm. And that's it. Stop yeah, no, I still, I still say yeah. continent because the whole like, upper, yeah. I mean, if it just like, just by breathing, it causes tremors. Mm -hmm. Tremors, yeah. If it wakes up, if it wakes up, it's gonna, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you can like even like if it breathes too much or some shit, it could cause uh, like an uh, oh, constant 
Oh, like shit. Earthquake, potentially. I, I remember when they were talking about how the Foundation was killing everyone off in SCP-5000. Mm -hmm. um, they threw bombs at 169 and woke it up, which caused tsunamis, uh, tsunamis uh, that went from east to west of its location. Hmm. And they covered half the continents they went to. <laughs> oh, so yeah. Definitely continent. <laughs> Easiest ranking, right? There's continent. Just hold on, I gotta find a fucking picture now. <laughs> hold on. I have to see which picture I used. Wait, that's 165, not 169. Okay, I used that one, okay. Find a picture of water and earth. And I'll find it. Did I not put it with this? I thought I did. I can't find a damn picture. <laughs> I know I put 169 with this set. Gosh damn it. I will find a damn picture. Of course, that fucking thing has to have a funny number. <laughs> You, it's like the poster for like okay. Actually, I I learned that, funnily enough, uh, the pee pee poo poo man poster. That's not real. That was photoshopped. You, sure. you seriously thought that was real? Yes, but I did watch where that poster came from. Uh, which it came from the, a movie called The Bye Bye Man. Uh, that movie's fucking shit. I literally had to play, uh, a a game on the side while watching it because it was so fucking uninteresting. And all the characters you want dead because they're just fucking pieces of shit. Like, there's also, like, an unnecessary love triangle, and it's like, just, just shut the fuck up. When isn't there an unnecessary love triangle? Uh, that's fair. That's <coughs> when the character is a romantic question mark? Ooh. Oh, wait, that doesn't exist because fucking a romantics are never represented in anything all right so do you guys know what fr means in the foundation universe mm. Mm, nope it means the french branch ew all right oh yes bad, a bunch of bad shit happens to the french branch well we're about to find out because i have never read this scp before SCP-185-FR is a cluster of anomalies presented in the redacted forest on the border between Poland and Belarus. So wait, not even in France, okay. This group is presently compromised in five instances designated SCP-185-FR-01 through SCP-185-FR-05. Each instance differs slightly from each other in its physical form, though not in its anomalous effects. Overall, instances of SCP-185-FR appear as pole-like metallic structures supporting an animated assembly, assembly that vaguely resembles a steelix sun. Their height ranges from 6 to 14 meters, while their diameter ranges from 3 to 5 meters. Collecting samples of the material composition of these instances is precluded by the effect of SCP-185-FR, which renders any approach physically impossible. Since the manifestation of SCP-185-FR-03, SCP-185-FR's area effect covers seven and a half square kilometers, partially delimited by the five instances. This area of effect fluctuates in unpredictable ways between instances within, with variations able to reach up to 150 meters. The duration between the fluctuations can vary from several hours to several days. All manner of kinetic energy is nullified in, inside SB185-FR's area of effect. Any object or life form caught within the zone during the fluctuation event is instantly frozen in place. 
In spite of this, gravitational forces still work within the zone, affecting objects and life forms alike. As such, a ball thrown in the zone during a fluctuation event will abruptly halt and fall to the ground. Due to the absence of kinetic forces, it is impossible to retrieve life forms trapped within the zone. Life forms trapped inside do not appear to decompose even if they are deceased. Oh. During a fluctuation event, the zone's event horizon appears as a vibrating invisible wall and becomes impossible to traverse. The only movements to have been detected within the zone is that of the various instances of SCP-185-FR. Since the appearance of SCP-185-FR-03, the area of effect has increased in, a, in an irregular manner with each new instance, even though the, the time will last between each new manifestation grows longer with each event. Each new manifestation has corresponded with a significant expansion of SCP-185-FR's area of effect. Researchers estimate that by 2019, the zone will have reached the, ta the town of Redacted, and that will have been partially or completely trapped within the anomalous area of effect by 2025. More precise simulations are made difficult due to the irregularity of the zone itself, However, what is certain is that given enough time, the effect will grow in to encompass the entire world. I feel like this is an easy ranking. Yeah. I, I feel I feel like it I feel I feel like it answers itself. So what you're saying is SK? XK? Yeah. Yum. 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 So I'm drawing this one character as this other character, but this other character's design is so, like, unnecessarily fucking complicated, I despise it. It is so fucking- it, it's awful to draw. Okay, so 196 is next. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, good. This one's a bit shorter to read than that one. All right. Descri description. SCP-196 appears to be a middle-aged male under two meters tall of Af African-American descent. He claims to be 47 years old. Subject has black hair and brown eyes. There are no abnormal physical characteristics. Subject displays all basic needs of a normal human being. Subject... Did they? Did... Oh, sorry. Yes. No, it's fine. Yeah. Did... You were saying, Dragon? Before I continue. Did they just decide to trap this random ass dude? Maybe. Hold on. <laughs> Subject dis displays all basic needs of a normal human being. I feel being. like they have done that before. I feel like that's just. Oh, yeah, the they class. have done it before. Remember that like yeah. time where they trapped that like person who like literally was not nothing but a normal ass dude but like everyone who was around him thought he was bad yeah yeah subject tested with an iq of 109 while within oh. normal per uh, perimeters subject's psychological ex examination indicated that he suffers from institutionalization and stockholm syndrome in relation relation to the Foundation Security staff. SCP-196 demonstrates no Euclid type or other abnormal abilities. Oh, this is just a dude. Wait, note. I've run a full battery of tests and the exam says that the guy is normal. Doctor redacted. So just a normal fucking- what the fuck? So they did- they just trapped this poor dude! He didn't even fucking do anything! <laughs> They're like, yeah, we're just gonna take this random. Well, there's ass also dude. an. No there's another addendum. So we should probably read that first. Addendum one nine six zero one. Document number one nine six zero one. SCP one nine six appeared at redacted inside of site redacted. SCP one nine six claims he was recruited in redacted of twenty redacted. 
through the standard Class D recruitment procedures for testing of SCP redacted. Subject That's also claims, yeah, it is. Subject also claims that his younger self is currently living in another location and redacted, redacted. Genetic identification checks hey. confirm that SCP-196 has encountered Foundation security personnel in the past. In an incident at Site 17 on Redacted, during that incident, SCP-196 was far older and was killed by SCP security personnel during an attempted break-in at the facility. SCP take a shot every. Oh, oh sorry. God. Take a shot every time it says Redacted. <laughs> Oh no. You'll fucking die. Oh, no, your no, liver no. your liver will fucking explode. <laughs> you will be you will be dead. SCP one nine six was at that time not knowing not known to the Foundation as anything other than a lone human assailant. However, he was found to be carrying SCP redacted and several purely mundane weapons. While a Yuka class event of this nature would normally result in an individual being terminated to prevent any potential for a catastrophic paradox, SCP-196 future self is already dead. This means that if if he were permitted to die, a catastrophic paradox would occur, damaging or destroying this continuity. continuity. SCP-196 must be kept alive until he decides to and successfully manage to escape of his own accord and somehow travels back to experience his own death while carrying SCP redacted. Note that because of the potential for paradox, SCP-196 must be kept far away from his younger double in redacted redacted. Additionally, a convert observation team must be permitted attached to SCP-196 younger self to protect his life. This dedicated security force should otherwise not intervene. Failure to prevent this timeline from unfolding naturally could result in damaging or destroying this continuity. For these reasons, SCP-196, despite being otherwise mundane, must be carefully monitored and has been classified as a Euclid slash Keter class object. I still stand by every time it says fucking redacted, take a shot. No. If you want to get fucking drunk easily, just actually look for mo at most SCP, uh, just fi like files. You'll probably fucking just one redacted. At least. Probably. So, what do you guys think? There were so many redacted in that. <laughs> I mean, it only affects, like, one dude, really, right? It's like... Yeah. I, mean, I feel like it's two people, but also, like... I think I think it's, like, a one-person thing. Because, yeah, it can fuck up, like, a lot of other shit. But, like, that's... If, you know? And it doesn't seem like he's gonna have that happen anytime soon. So I think it's just, like, a one-dude thing. What do you think, Adorna? Yeah. I agree with Dragon. All right. All right, let's see what's next. Two oh four. Oh no, we're getting close to two seventeen. Oh, oh no. Oh, what's that oh, one? Uh, Scarlet King's wives. Oh. Oh, that sounds bad, but I also don't know what the fuck that means. Oh, you'll find out. Oh dear. Oh yeah, you're gonna find out. <laughs> For sure. The heel. Alright. Alright, description. SCP-204-1 is a semi-organic nano machine colony that follows SCP-204-2 as a form of protector. SCP-204-1 spends the majority of its time in a dispersed cloud where it's almost impossible to perceive with normal human senses. However, if, if SCP-204-2 is put into danger, or if SCP-204-2 commands it to, SCP-204-1 will instantaneously materialize into a solid physical form. The exact shape and nature of this form is subjective. Depending 
wholly upon SCP-204-2's view, state of mind, and imagination. Despite its variable nature, SCP-204-1 has a number of common traits. These include massive strength, large size, basic intelligence, perfect obedience to SCP-204, and the ability to regenerate itself after consuming living flesh. SCP-204-1 is vulnerable to conventional weaponry and can be temporarily forced back into its dispersed state if enough damage is inflicted. SCP-204-2 is always a child, ranging from 4 to 14 years old. Physically, there's nothing outstanding about SCP-204-2 besides the ability to call upon SCP-204-1. All inconsistencies of SCP-204-2 have common traits. All of them have a history of abuse and danger, with many developing acute mental disorders as a result. This makes instances of SCP-204-2 difficult to contain in any traditional manner, as a great care must be taken to keep them in a stable state. It appears that SCP-204-1 is attracted to such children, though why or how it finds them is currently unknown. SCP-204-2. This reminds me. Of yeah. It reminds me of like the little sisters from Rapture. I feel like yeah. it's that, like that kind of thing. I would be surprised if they weren't inspired by that. Probably. If SCP-204-2 is terminated or re reaches the age of 14, then SCP-204-1 will abandon it and find a new child to imprint on. Well, damn. As a form of self-preservation, if SCP-204-1 cannot find a suitable child, it will immediately materialize and go berserk, attacking anything in sight. Oh, shit. Material girl. Since SCP-204-1 finds a suitable candidate to protect, it immediately imprints upon SCP-204-2 and will follow it until SCP-204-2 expires or until SCP-204-1 decides to leave of, of its own accord. At first, uh. SCP-204-1 appears benign, protecting SCP-204-2 from overt threats. However, through careful study and observation, it has been noted that all inconsistencies of SCP-204-2 begin to adopt much more aggressive, danger-seeking behavior with no regard for human life. It is theorized that SCP-204-1 is able to manipulate SCP-204-2's thought process in order to behave in a fashion that would benefit it. It is assumed that since SCP-204-1 requires organic flesh for substance, it needs SCP-204-2 to be in danger in order to justify its activation. At first it sounded it was nice, but then not so much. Yeah. It, sounded... it still sounds a lot like the Big Daddies from the... Just, Just more sounded... manipulative. Like... Oh. Mm-hmm. To me, it sounded like uh, the shit from, what is it called? Uh, they're like werewolves from, what, it, what the fuck is that thing called? Oh wait, no, 217 um, is the virus, not the... Never mind, I was talking about yeah, the, the werewolves from... Twilight? Twilight, yeah. I will never get over how fucking weird Twilight is. So where should we Me put neither. this? What do you guys think? So let's see. It affects like children. Uh, Search and group. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at first I thought we were about to reclassify it, then it got disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> like at first it doesn't seem that bad, but then you're like, oh. Oh. Oh my. So, how, so it's due to COVID season, we're going to be doing a virus SCP. <laughs> oh. The last few years have been COVID season, Bright. Yeah, it's been COVID season for a while, Bright. Yeah, I know. 
Right? It's like a uh, Internet Explorer. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, SCP two seventeen. I'm right. Oh, hush, dragon. SCP two seventeen is a virus incurable by current be current means with a rate of ineffectivity at 100%. It affects... Right. Yeah. To be fair, you did put playing playing Internet Explorer on your profile for a while. I did it as a joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah apparently I, I tricked that. Dragon into thinking I actually have Internet Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very smart, you know this. <laughs> anyway, it affects all organisms or affects all organisms in a kingdom animalia, and it can be spread via touch or contact with body bodily fluid. SCP-217 is very very hard very hardy. Okay. And it can survive for years outside the host body. The progress of the infection is very slow, with some subjects going several years before manifesting any symptoms. SCP-217 alters the biochemistry of organic tissue, causing organic matter to rearrange in a form of organic metal. The processes involved with this change are not yet fully understood, but the advanced stages are well documented. A subject will begin to turn into a complex arrangement of gears and clockwork. These taking over for the former biological functions, advanced stage infection is is reported to be very painful, but e earlier stages are oftentimes unnoticed, with only vague feelings of confusion, insomnia, and joint stiffness. Hearts are replaced by gears and small tubes, joints by gear networks, eyes by Structure is not unlike primitive hand crank film cameras. SCP-217 shows first on the outside of the body in all creatures ex except mammals. In mammals, it first converts the internal structure before manifesting outside the body. This can cause those infected to go for very long periods of time without knowing of infection. SCP-217 has even been shown to totally convert the inside of the body before showing any externally visible symptoms. SCP-217 has infected several major metropolitan areas in the past, most notably redacted. The mental state of those in middle and advanced stages of infection ha has been shown to be much diminished. Subjects respond to in a repetitive fashion, are very, very dull and mechanical in action are easily distracted and confused and appear generally irritable when faced with new problems. In addition, research on fully converted grain has data expunged. Wait, wait. So, so, is it just... Fuck. Is it just ADHD virus? That turns your whole body into metal, metal clockwork. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't kill you, but it forces your whole body to go through hell of turning into metal. Wait, then why did why did we die when we went through that? Uh, cause I choose so. <laughs> um, cause mainly it was a keter. I didn't I didn't read much about it. I just saw it was a keter. It's like okay. I mean, you you you're you would lose most of your brain function. Imagine using any of your brain, though. So you on a daily basis? <gasps> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I had to. I mean, you're right. But, um... So what do you guys think? Uh, it only affects, like, I, I think... I think... City... I think the city's kind of pushing it, though. What do you think, Adarna? Ha! I think would would probably be a good... Yeah, because... I mean, it's not like 610. Yeah. Like, if it was like 610 type of modification... 
then well, I can also it does just um. You're saying? Moderna? I think the Moderna is fucking dead. <laughs> it, does, it does have less uh, ability to be like communicated to other people. So. Yeah. Six ten. It's it's basic. Okay, so it's basically a. This is this is my kind of take on it. It's basically similar to HIV, but it gives you ADHD plus autism like symptoms. With the with the horrible thing of not being able to use your brain at all. Mm. All right. Now this is probably gonna be Dragon's first one, but we're about to get oh. into a joke SCP. Oh. All right. SCP two 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 dash J is an incredibly contagious biophysical mimetic phenomenon capable of infectious transmission between multiple victims over distances both long and close range. This better not be a D's nuts joke. SCP-222-J can affect any vertebrate in the animal kingdom, but is most prevalent among higher life forms, including felines, canines, equines, reptilians, and avians. SCP-222-J is most virulent in humans. SCP-222-J was only recently discovered by the Foundation, but further research has led to the fact that it has been known about since the early Redacted century. I feel like that's so unnecessary to redact that. <laughs> SCP. Just fucking say what it is. Like, come on now. SCP 222 J takes a form of a sudden and extremely prolonged inhalation of air by the affected subject, after which is shorter, harsher exhalation. Ex exhalation. Subjects may stretch their bodies or limbs during SCP-22-J's occurrence, stopping in their tracks as they are overcome by its effects. Subjects may even attempt to cover their mouth while SCP-22-J is taking place. Researchers theorize this is an instinctive behavior to prevent the subject's soul from escaping. Another leading theory states that SCP-22-J is evidence of demonic possession and that the subject must be exercised. SCP-222-J can be transmitted through virtually any form of media, including long-distance audio, visual stimuli, and in-person interaction. Mass media shows high rates of transmission, which approximately redacted percent of exposed subjects infected within seconds. SCP-222-J is especially virulent in subjects with major sleep deprivation or boredom. Well, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you, so you and you, Lilith, and Pika would be affected by this greatly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> One subject infected with SCP-222-J can infect any number of other subjects. Research has not found any upper limit. Researchers are working on several theories to explain SCP-222-J's mimetic properties as well as devising a way to contain or neutralize it. The most effective treatment at the moment is for an infected subject to drink 8 fluent ounces of any hot beverage infused with Psychoactive Stimulant C. Hmm. A second test has shown that SCP-222-J may only be transmittable between subjects who are empathetic. empathetic. D-class subjects with their frontal choruses completely removed did not exhibit signs of SCP-222-J's infection. 
after a full 24 hours of exposure. These D class have been appointed as guards should SP 222 J ever be successfully contained. Any infected personnel are able to request maximum strength amnestics, and it is highly recommended that they do so to avoid an outbreak. SCP 222 J could easily become a global pandemic in the wrong mouth. How the hell is this a joke, SCP? <laughs> is this like the other joke, SCP, where like if you say say the phrase, you end up fucking reality? <laughs> <laughs> like what the hell? Why are some of the joke SCPs powerful? <laughs> so what do you guys think? It's cool, I guess. I don't know what the fuck to put under. Same, I don't know either. Like, what the hell? Well, as long as the person doesn't say it, it doesn't do damage. Or as long as it doesn't, the infection doesn't spread or whatever. I'm back. I got a drink and pizza. Yeah, so it's... And I... How much did you hear, Dragon? Um, internet spreads it. <laughs> okay, so what do you think? Oh, well, it can it? go anywhere, right? <laughs> if it can go anywhere by social media, that's like worldwide. But there's also governments that have restricted internet, meaning that the thing itself can be restricted, depending on how governments treat their internet access. So, right. Could be, could be continent or higher. Yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> the picture! I forgot what the picture I got for it, but it was it was a picture of an ultrasound of an unborn human fetus infected with SCP two 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 dash J. What is that? <laughs> that you see the picture, right? That's a fetus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that was the picture I used. I think, okay, you want to know something super funny about ultrasounds? What? what? Um, I remember when my cousin was pregnant, uh, pregnant, so this was years ago. Uh, they thought that her kid was going to be a girl. Turns out the little bastard was just covering it. That's a thing. They can just, and you, you can't tell. Fucking, hmm. it's like, it's like, oh, huh. yeah, ultrasounds are fucking weird. Oh boy. Hey, dragon. Yeah. You want to know what we're about to get into? What? Oh no. What? The Scarlet King's wives. <sighs> yep. Are the wives hot? I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> are they? I must know, Bright. Let's just say some of them are under 18. I'm not oh. answering that. Wait, what? I'm not, okay. Actually, I'm not on, uh, over the age of 18, so I can. Unless they're, like, under the age of 14, well, they're, which they're I'm not doing that either. They're all pregnant, Dragon. Who is going to jail? <laughs> um... I don't think it you was, can put a demonic was... entity in a jail. <laughs> I, I don't think you can. Sadly. <laughs> Whose ass am I beating? <gasps> You'll die. Yeah. Oh yeah, he, he'll up. beat your ass. He is the demonic being of destruction, death, and misery. You'll die. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, but anyway... Yeah, instead of being I'll description, just so you know, Dragon, there is no description. We get special oh. containment procedures. <laughs> Following repeated escape and suicide attempts and based on the failure containment for SCP-231-1 through 6, containment of SCP-231-7 has been amended to the following. SCP-231 is to be contained within 
in a soundproof holding cell adjacent to holding cells for six D class D personnel assigned for the purpose of procedure 110 Montauk. Cameras oh, yeah. Cameras you, don't, you don't want to know what the procedure is. It's probably not good, is it? No, no, no. It no, might no, say no. it in here. I'm not sure. Cameras will monitor with every inch of of the cell at all times and if, if it is in here like if it does describe it i'm not going to say it because uh Bad. twitch will get on my ass we'll just say oh. that isn't twitch lenient with some things too let's just say it goes on to an extremely disturbing size like very yeah. disturbing oh dear yeah and must be manned 24 hours a day malfunctioning malfunctioning Monitoring equipment will be replaced without delay by psychologically screened staff. Doors will be magnetically locked, op open only by positive action by the control and monitoring facility. This includes all doors linking the main holding cell to those of the 6th Class D personnel. I want to read ahead just to be sure. Okay. Does it mention it? Um. Okay, it does not mention it. Okay, I'm safe. Okay. <laughs> SCP-231-7 is to be kept restrained to a hospital bed at all times, except for the purpose of Procedure 110 Montauk. Wait, isn't this? Oh, wait, sorry. It's alright. Isn't this this one lady? Uh, that like if she gives birth, like a terrible event will happen. Yes, this is the SCP yep. we were talking about. Yeah. Okay, I know about it. Never mind. Hydration will be provided through the IV drip. Feeding will be carried out twice per day th through feeding tube by approved medical personnel who have been taken a Hippocratic Oath. Under no circumstances are narcotics, anesthesia, or other unapproved med medications to be administered to SCP-231-7. Procedure 110 Montauk is to be carried out at least... Hold on, I'll make sure. Okay, it doesn't... We're gonna make sure... It doesn't do it again. I feel so bad for this this woman because she has to go Okay, it doesn't describe hell. what it is. It's just, just it takes it tells what takes place. It doesn't describe what they do. Thank goodness. Okay. Procedure okay. one ten Montauk is to be carried out at least once every twenty four hours by Class D personnel. During procedure one ten Montauk, at least one security clearance for staff member must monitor the procedure by camera at all times. Although the sound may be turned off if the vocalizations of SP two three one Dash seven become too distressing. Following the procedure, all Class D personnel must return to their holding cells, or explosive callers will be detonated. Oh my! Yeah. De oh yeah. You know what? I oh there is a description. Description: SCP two three one dash seven is a redacted female between redacted and redacted years of age, with that ex expunged. SCP-231-1 through 7 were retrieved from Redacted following a police raid on a warehouse owned by an organization called the Children of the Scarlet King. 24 hours... Is this where SCP-999 comes from? Yes. Uh, 24 okay. hours after the rescue, SCP-231-1 went into labor pains, giving birth three minutes later to SCP Redacted. Causing a redacted event resulting in over redacted confirmed casualties. Founding personnel. Yeah, with all the fucking redacted. <laughs> it's fucking annoying. Foundation personnel nice. immediately took possession of remaining SCP 231 2 through 231 7 and, based on notebooks recovered from the, from the cult, instituted Procedure 110 Montauk to prevent further occurrences. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and and read the addendums, uh, because that talks how they don't. died. <laughs> we don't need to know. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. as far as I'm going. <laughs> I ain't pushing it. <laughs> if, you, if anyone watching wants to know what happens, uh, you have to be 18 plus and go read on your own court, because <laughs> I'm not going to read it here. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's uh, YouTube channels that go over this. Okay, so this is this one is a isn't it pretty much just world ending? Like this could. It's well, world actually, uh -huh. the oh, yeah, thing also is also like six eight two. Wasn't that 
Yeah, 682 was one of them. But um, the thing is, there's actually a story that's canon about 231. The seventh wife already gave birth. And that's 999. Oh. Because the seventh, the seventh child was meant to be the hero. Aww. How the fuck is a blob gonna fight God? Well, actually, he almost he, he literally four six eight two down to the floor, by tickling him. Also, Kirby. <laughs> Kirby. I, I keep I keep forgetting Kirby exists. Which you would think it would be kind of difficult because Kirby's actually getting a new game. Yeah. So what do you guys think? Um, world ending. XK? Yeah. Yeah. Shit goes bad. Everything's fucked. Alright. I'm probably going to just do one more and then that'll be it for the stream. Oh no. Next number is 231-J. I swear to oh, fuck God. if they made a joke over this SCP, that's gonna go poorly. <laughs> or what? If they made a joke of SCP-231. Because it's SCP-231-J. Oh my. <laughs> Wow. It's not, but I love this one. This one's hilarious. <laughs> SCP-231-J is a hostile metamorphic entity that has generated from the unpaid loan of $2 given to Dr. Elena Jackson, the current administrator of the Foundation, on April 26, 1983. The loan was, re was received from POI-231-Omega, <laughs> who was then one of Dr. Jackson's co-workers at Site-19, where Dr. Jackson has been the site director before her promotion. Don't, what? On September 26, 1983, in the aftermath of a major containment breach by SCP Redacted that resulted in 23,401 fatalities, the administrator was confronted about the unpaid debt. <laughs> On April 10th, 1990, following the death of the previous administrator from food poisoning, Dr. Jackson was elected as his replacement in the light of her heroism and leadership during the incident redacted black. Hmm. Two days after her, her inauguration, Contact with the Foundation was reestablished by PO1 231 Omega. Having recovered from his amnestic treatment through the usage of the highly esoteric and experimental technique known as having written it down prior to the amnestics. <laughs> At the point. Sometimes that doesn't work. Yeah. At, at this point, through several. Well, that that mostly works only happens with like anti memes yeah. though yeah at at this point through several loopholes carefully designed by POI-231 omega SCP-231-J has increased in value to holy shit hold on 50 billion 936 million Two hundred ninety-nine thousand one hundred two dollars and forty-nine cents plus tax, with the additional debt is of five hundred human souls. <laughs> Maybe, with up, I think. <laughs> with the additional oh debt of five hundred human souls, two truckloads of diamonds, the blood of a virgin, and a goddamn pony. <laughs> right. Wait. So... Right. Right. You're Wait, breaking so... up really fucking badly. Wait. Wait what? So. Are they a fucking witch? Maybe. Wait, can you hear oh, me, you're Adurna? Up, right. Wait, what? Why am I breaking up? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Probably Discord's end, because it shows green bars. What the fuck, Discord? Because Dreamlizer chose me perfect. Fucking 
Discord. Fix your shit. I feel like Discord hates you. Most likely. But anyway, following this contact, POI-231 Omega was promptly located by MTF PSI-8. Issued several restraining orders, reprimanded, and stabbed to death. <laughs> Before his termination, POI-231 Omega made an otherwise unintelligible method of a transfer to to a third party collections agency. <laughs> Following this, SCP 231 J was temporarily class reclassified as neutralized. But they changed it again <laughs> to Keter. <laughs> so it got brought back. Every time I hear MTF, I always think male to trans female? people? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't the trans community uh, not the fucking trans community? Goddamn, SCP community pretty opening, like open to trans people. Yeah, there's actually a bunch of SCPs that'll have trans flag on on lo SCP logo. Yeah. Yeah. Why do I? Do I have two of these? The yeah, but uh, what do you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> it seems kind of memey. It's a joke, SCP. Of course it is. I mean, it's just the loan that it, it requires so much. I mean, the blood of the virgin surprised me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. blood of the virgin is, is something that is usually like used for like witches and shit. Yeah. Very typical witch. <laughs> the funny thing is that that broke me was right after blood of the virgin was and a goddamn pony. <laughs> Okay, the thing about the blood, jo blood of a virgin is the fact that, like, technically anyone can be. Because, like, it's just an, like, virginity is a made-up thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I always find that so weird when it's like, it's like, huh? Yeah. Well, like, technically any child they could just fucking yeah. kill. Or bright. <coughs> Wow, fuck you. <laughs> Don't worry. I wouldn't... They, they could kill me, too. I'm sorry. <laughs> also, also, but the thing is, you can constantly be, like, you know, re yeah, realived. It's all good. Fuck you. But anyway, what do you guys <laughs> think? Should, should it be reassigned? That's what I'm kind of thinking. It was already reassigned, yeah, reassigned. then brought back. <laughs> now it's going to be reassigned again. <laughs> reassigned. <gasps>